Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that I have a course on Photoshop called Photoshop Unleashed. Overnight, I received an email from someone asking me if my course included a tutorial on clipping masks. And actually, my course doesn't. When I created my course, I geared it more towards the photographer. And clipping mask is something that I think a graphic artist or a graphic designer would more often use. With that said, though, I do believe there are some instances where a photographer might need to use a clipping mask. So I'm going to be adding this to my course. In the meantime, I thought I'd do a YouTube video on it. I have several different examples. I'm going to show you how to just apply a simple clipping mask. Then I'm going to show you some other things you could do with it. And we're going to finish up by adding text to a clipping mask. So I have this design. And what I want to do is I want to take this model and put mainly her head and shoulders in this design. But I don't want it to go anywhere else but the design. This is where the clipping mask comes in. It's really very easy to do. We're going to go to the model, and I have the move tool. The keyboard shortcut for the move tool is the V key. And by the way, on my website, I have a full list of all the keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. It's a free PDF that you could download and print at home. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. You could download that for free. Now, I'm going to just click right on the model and then drag the entire image up to the tab that has the design, and then just drop her on top. And you can see now it's totally covering up that design. As you look at the layers um, panel, you could see that the model image is on top of the design. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of place her where I want to. And to do that, while I'm clicked on her layer, that's layer two, I'm just going to go to the opacity, and I'm going to bring that down. You can click here and take the opacity slider that way. Usually what I like to do, I like to use what they call a scrubby slider. If you just put your cursor over the word opacity, it will turn into a little hand. And that's called a scrubby slider. Click with the left mouse button. You could drag down to pull it down, pull down the opacity, or go to the right to push it up. I'm just going to pull it down enough so I could see the design below the model. I still have the move tool, and I'll just take it and I'll reposition her maybe something like that. And I could re position her later, but this is just for tentative reasons. Now I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100 so we don't see the design anymore. And this is where the clipping mask comes in. Now, a lot of different ways you could apply it. You could go up to the menu system to do it. A lot of people like to right click right on the layer and then go down to create clipping mask. You can see the keyboard shortcut there is on a Mac is option command G on a PC that would be alt control G. The way I like to do it though is I just hold in the option key on my Mac alt key on a PC and when you do that and you just bring your cursor between the two layers you'll get this little square with a downward facing arrow. Click with your left mouse button and bam you created your clipping mask and you can see how the model now just the parts of the image of the model are where the design is. Now, the move tool will still move the model, so you can move her around, but you can see how it's only going to be where the design is, nowhere else. Now, the reason why you may want to do this is you may have, let's say, a website, and you want your picture in, let's say, the top area of the website or something like that, and you want to make it a little more fancy than just like maybe a, a, a round circle with your face in it. So you could do something like this. And because this is clipped out, you can see we have the checkerboard pattern behind the design. So that is transparent. So wherever you put this, whatever is behind it will show through. So if you have a website, let's say, with a blue banner, and you're going to put this on the blue banner, the blue will come through. And to do that, to make sure that you're preserving this transparency, when you export this from Photoshop, you need to go up to File, then down to Export, then to Export As. And you're going to want to go to this dropdown where it says Format and change it to PNG and make sure that transparency is checked. Then you can click Export, give it a name, and save it to where you want to on your computer. And then it will preserve that transparency, and then you'll be able to put this on something and allow whatever is behind it to come through. Uh, now, let's try another one. Let's go to this one. I have this similar design, and we have this model. 
So what I want to do is take her and put her on top of that other image. Now, over the years that I've been doing Photoshop videos, uh, some people who have PCs have told me, not all people, but some people who have PCs, told me that when they use the Move tool and just click and try to drag it up to the tab, it doesn't work. Well, there's another way to do this. What you need to do is select everything. So on a PC, you would hit Control-A. On my Mac, I'll hit Command-A. You can see there's marching ants going all around the outside of the image. Now you need to copy this to the clipboard. On a PC, again, you'd hit Control-C. That will copy it to the clipboard on a Mac, Command-C. Then we'll go up to the image or the design. And then to paste it here on a PC, hit Control-V. On a Mac, Command-V. And then what will happen is it should put it there, and it did. Now, it's there, but it's way bigger, so we need to resize this, not only to reposition it, but to resize it. So what I need to do is go into transform mode. So hit Command or Control T on your keyboard to go to transform mode. But you can see the handles are way out of spec. There's one over here, and all the others are off the screen. So to get at the other handles, I need to make this smaller. So I'm going to hit Command minus on my Mac a few times. It's Control minus on a PC. So I could see all the handles. Then I could grab a handle and I could move our model down to where I need her. Now with that, I could hit Command plus a couple times to make it slightly larger so I could see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to bring the opacity down again like I did before. Then I'm going to reposition our model to where I need her to be. Maybe right there would be good. And I could resize if I want to, but I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit this little checkbox up here to commit to the resize. Now I'm going to bring the, well, I don't actually, I didn't, I made a mistake. I don't have her all the way up to the top. You can see part of the design is still there. So I'll go back into free transform mode, mode by hitting command T on my Mac. Again, it's control T on a PC. I'll make this bigger. And then I'll move her down a little bit like this. Maybe I could get away with it like that. So I'm making her bigger, bigger, bigger. I guess that's about as good as I could get. I could, again, resize and reposition this after I apply the clipping mask after I see what it looks like. So we'll click the little check mark to commit to this transformation. Then we're going to bring opacity all the way up. Then we're going to go down in between the two layers, holding the option can of Mac, alt can of PC, get that little arrow, downward facing arrow with the square and click. And now you could see that we put her there. Now, again, I could move her around as needed. I also could resize her as needed by hitting command T or control T again. You see, you got the handles so I could resize and then click the little check mark up here. Now, again, we have this transparency. What if you want to put a color behind her instead of having the transparency? Well, to do that, click on the bottom layer. This is the layer that has the design. And then what we're going to do is add a layer under it. To do that, hold in the command can to Mac, control can to PC, and click this little plus square down here. That's to add a layer. And we're adding the layer down here. Now, what color do we want to add there? Well, to do that, click on the little front swatch, which is right here. And we'll pick a color. Now, she's like in warm. Why don't we try to contrast it with more of a cooler shade, something like that. So we change this front swatch to that color. To get that front swatch, like covering this entire bottom layer, on a Mac, hold in the Option key and hit the Delete key. On a PC, you'd hold in the Alt key and hit the Backspace key. And when you do that, you'll apply that color to that bottom, in this case, because I'm on the bottom layer, the bottom layer. Now, if you wanted to apply the background swatch, you would hold in the command key on a Mac and hit the delete key. On a PC, you'd hit the, hold in the control key and hit the backspace key. I use keyboard shortcuts all the time in Photoshop, and that's part of the reason why I created that PDF of keyboard shortcuts, and I learned a lot of them. And it's just a real time saver to do a lot of op a lot of these things using keyboard shortcuts. Now, to finish this all off, what if we want to do something with text? And that's very easy. I have this circle here, and I have this uh, image of space. And I want to put the space in the circle along with some text. 
So what we'll do is we'll get this space uh, image. I have the move tool. Again, it's the V key. V is in victory is the keyboard shortcut. Drag it up to the shape and then just drop it on here. And let's try to reposition it where we want. We'll bring opacity down to try to reposition it maybe where we want. Maybe right around there would look good. Okay. And then we'll bring opacity back up. Now, you can do the clipping mask now if you want, and then do the text later. Um, let's do that. Let's hold in the Option Can of Mac, Alt Can of PC, and click between the two layers, and you can see how the space is now covering up the, uh, or just in the area where the circle is. And now to do text, we're going to get the, the type tool, hit the T key on your keyboard. And for some reason on a Mac, sometimes you have to hit the T key a couple times to get it to work. I don't know why. I'm going to stay with the Lee Gothic um, uh, text or type that I'm going to use, but I don't want to use that blue color we used before. I want to use white. So we'll come up here and click on that swatch to change it to white. Now, I'm not so worried about the size yet. So I'm going to cup here, click up here and write uh, photography and then hit the enter key and click tutorials. Okay. Now I have that there. It's kind of small. This is the way I like to do it. A lot of people, you could resize it up here, but you'd have to select all the text. So right now, if I go up here and use the scrubby slider and push up the size, you notice it's not changing. You have to select everything here like that, and then go up there and do the scrubby slider. But what I'd like to do is I just click the check mark. And over here, I have a type tool or a character tool ready for me. If you don't have that over there, go up to window and then down here to character right there. Click on that. And when you do, it will appear over here. With this, you don't have to select all the letters to resize it. Just go put your cursor right over the T for the size. It's a scrubby slider appears. Click and move it to the right and you could resize it. Now we have the uh, move tool and we could come in and move it where we need it. And we could resize it some more. Make it bigger, bigger, bigger. Now you'll notice... If I come off, you see how it's coming off. If there was an instance where you want it to go on to the back, you don't want it to go on the background, I should say, you could clip the type to the layer below it too. So you could hold in that Alt Option key and click uh, between the two layers. And now I clipped the actual type to the space layer. So if I do come off, you'll notice now it's disappearing. So that's an option that you could do. So that is that. And that's really um, uh, clipping mask. Now, to undo a clipping mask, uh, what I like to do is I use the keyboard shortcut up sh Option Command G. Uh, if you use the Option Command G, let me do it on the space layer. On my Mac, it's Alt Control G on a PC. You could see it'll undo it. Hit Option Command G on a Mac or Alt Control G again, and you'll reapply it. So that's way you could undo your clipping mask if you need to. Um, you also could right click on it and go down to release clipping mask. That will also do it. But again, I prefer the keyboard shortcut, option command G and bam. So clipping masks, very easy to do. And if you have purchased my course, Photoshop Unleashed, um, I will be adding this to the course. And of course, with the course, you get all the graphics and pictures so you could work along at home. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.